Well, Brexit has now begun. Gibraltar is ready for the challenges that Brexit brings. We have been doing a lot of work with Robin Walker in the Department for Exiting the European Union and with Alan Duncan in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. The Conservative Party has been returned to government and they are still in post. And I think that's very helpful to Gibraltar because um, we have built very strong relationships with Robin Walker and with Alan Duncan in the process of a very short but intense period since the Brexit result was announced and uh, Mrs May reshuffled the cabinet only last year. So it was good to be able to continue to see through that work with them. We are going to be fully involved in the process of negotiation in ensuring that Gibraltar's voice is heard as details come back from Brussels of what it is that the European Union is seeking from these negotiations. The European Union is very helpfully publishing its position papers on all aspects of what they are putting to Secretary of State Davis, and we're involved in being able to provide feedback to that, and also some of the material that we get, which is not publicly available. Well, to quote a German spokesman, the EU is negotiating with a Britain that's fallen down the plug hole. How difficult is it to keep up with all these changes? Well, I think you have to get used to the fact that we are negotiating in a media environment which did not exist at the time that we acceded to the European Union. So people say this is the most detailed negotiation for the past 70 years. Well, the accession negotiation was very detailed too. But we mustn't be looking at every sigh and at every remark that a minister makes or that a negotiator makes. We must be looking at where we are going. Gibraltar is a very clear view of where it needs to be in the context of the end of the negotiations. This is going to be a process. Spain has been seen, um, or at least Spanish newspapers are suggesting great victories for Spain, etc. We have to make sure that we achieve what we need to achieve for Gibraltar, and that will be Gibraltar's victory at the end of the process. Well, very hard to see where Britain is going. Pressure from the hard Brexiteers, but then talk of soft Brexits. So very hard to actually gauge what's going to happen. Well, you could analyse in political terms the Conservative Party having different factions. Um, if you did, you might have seen that uh, Philip Hammond was associated with one faction, David Davis uh, with another. Uh, the Hammond faction um, is not saying that they want to stay in the single market and concede any one of the four fundamental freedoms. That Mr. Hammond made very clear during the course of interviews during the past uh, weekend. Mr. Davis is saying the same thing he's been saying. And so it's clear that the United Kingdom is leaving the single market and is leaving the customs union today. Whether that changes as part of the negotiations or not is crystal ball gazing. All we can rely on are the things that have been actually said. Those things lead us to the conclusion that the United Kingdom's position will be to leave the, U the single market and leave the customs union. And for you to be kept up to date, what contact are you having with the British government? How often are you talking? There is very fluid contact. It's, it's soon, uh, in my view, not going to be news at all that I'm in contact with ministers. Today's technology is different to the technology before, so therefore, as you can imagine, I'm in very close contact uh, by WhatsApp, by text message, by email, with ministers directly. I also speak to them on the phone. We have video conferences and we have face-to-face -face meetings as we require. But the the movement of information from one side to the other is very, very fluid indeed.